white letters and a microphone appear atop gray clouds and a yellow sun, sunstorm stories. Marin Jensen appears on screen. Marin describes themselves as a multiply disabled, autistic, hard of hearing, mixed race, which includes white and Taiwanese person. Marin is queer and transgender. If you're going to become deathly ill as an autistic person in the middle of a pandemic, in theory, Oregon is a good place for that. I'm reluctant to say you're ever lucky to get sick, but Oregon passed SB 1606. And they passed it in the early days of the pandemic when ventilator shortages meant that doctors were genuinely debating if those of us with intellectual developmental disabilities were worth spending a ventilator on, if we were worth saving. And Oregon's response was to pass a law that guaranteed those of us with disabilities that had higher support needs, the right to have support people in the hospital with us during the length of our admission, regardless of current visitor restrictions surrounding COVID-19. And I thought that would be enough to protect me. So when I admitted into the ER, I brought with me printed copies of this SB 1606 in the event that maybe I encountered a nurse or something who wasn't aware. Instead, I encountered an entire hospital system from CNAs to the nursing staff administrator who had no idea why I had the right to have someone with me. Every single time my support people were allowed into the hospital, I was told, this is a favor. You should be grateful because we're doing you a favor. And it wasn't a favor, it's the law. Every single nurse shift change, I would beg my new assigned staff members to come in and talk to me. And I would tell them, I know, I know that right now you don't think I look what you think autism must look like, but over the next 12 hours, I can promise that if there's almost a guarantee I will have a meltdown, I will probably lose access to mouth words, and you will look at me and you will be unsure if I am what you think a human should be. Please know I'm not a danger to myself. I'm not a danger to others. I just need support. I just need what everyone should have the right to have access to while they are trying to recover and to heal. And sometimes it went well. I had the privilege of having two CNAs who were always my overnight CNAs, both of whom were Asian like I am, and they would wake me up with songs about my coffee. But mostly it didn't. From the nurse, when I started sobbing over a meltdown because no one was following my chart and looked at me in disgust and said, when's your support person getting here before slamming the door behind her? To the CNA who got too disgusted by the sounds I was making trying to ask to use the bathroom. Her response to my chart saying I was not allowed to toilet independently because I was on blood thinners was to leave. And so instead I crawled my way out of the hospital bed and couldn't make it into my wheelchair. So I got onto the filthy hospital floor and I crawled myself, dragging my IV pole hooked to a port inside my chest behind me until I could reach the bathroom by myself. And I was eventually found by a nurse a couple hours later, sobbing hysterically on the floor, unable to talk. I didn't have any nurses or doctors who looked like me, save for one doctor, this wonderful man of color who had full conversations with me and explained everything he was going to do. You shouldn't have to expend your energy on masking, on lip reading, on convincing your healthcare team that your life is worth saving, even if you don't speak the way they do. But when you are autistic, when you are an autistic person of color in a white hospital, that's what you have to do. I have so much privilege. I am light skinned. I have often access to mouth words. And perhaps in this situation, most importantly, I had the knowledge of working in the protection and advocacy system for five years with countless colleagues willing to go to bat for me. And given all of those things stacked in my favor, I incurred so much medical trauma. 
I can no longer enter a hospital or even a doctor's office without going nonverbal and sobbing hysterically. If that is the experience for me, we can all imagine how much worse it is for so many others in our community. It does not take, it should not take, a state law to provide equitable access to people with disabilities and to those of us who have intellectual and developmental disabilities. It takes compassion, it takes extra time, and it takes changing your paradigm from seeing us as broken or other to seeing us as patients, like every other patient who deserve the same access to health and to recovery and to care. Four logos appear on screen. This initiative was brought to you by the National Disability Rights Network, Foundations for Divergent Minds, the John Hopkins Disability Health Research Center, and funded by the With Foundation. For more information or to share your story for future editions of this project, visit us at ndrn.org.